All right, in this video, we're going to tear down the Galaxy S21 Plus, take a look at the internals, take a look at its repairability, and see what makes this thing tick. Let's go. These boxes are tough to open, even though I just opened it yesterday. I've got to give it to Samsung. I'm a longtime iPhone user, but I really like the build on this phone. I like everything about it. Love the design. Such a solid, solid device. Let's put this thing on the heat mat and get this back panel removed. All right, now that we've got that back glass heated up, let's try to get that off of there without breaking it. Now I can't destroy this phone because I want it to be fully functional after I'm finished. Anything I break, I'm gonna have to replace parts wise and I doubt there are going to be any parts available for this phone for a little while at the very least. Here I use a combination of 99% isopropyl alcohol and a flat X-Acto knife blade. The blade can scratch the underside of the glass very easily so if you're not planning on replacing the glass then you might want to switch to something uh, less abrasive like a nylon spudger or a guitar pick otherwise you're definitely going to have to replace that glass. Now we've got the back glass separated from the main body of the phone and we can get a closer look at the inside of the phone. Set that back glass off to the side after we check it for dexterity. It looks like they're still using frosted glass. It doesn't look like the plastic polycarbonate that we found on the S21. Now there are a lot of screws in this phone. Uh, I counted 23 in the main part of the frame and an additional three in the charge port. That's an unusual amount of screws for one cell phone, but you can't complain about the structure. You can't complain about how well it keeps all your components in place. It's just a lot of work when it comes to removing all those screws. So at least they're all Phillips screws. If it was four different types of screws like we find in iPhones, you'd be there all day switching screwdrivers. So no complaints. On the bright side, all of these screws are the exact same size, so you don't have to leave them out and organized. You can just unscrew them and put them in a little pile. I use a magnetic mat so that they don't get strong all over my desk, but at least they're all the same size. Just a few more screws down here at the bottom, and we will be ready to pull away the wireless charging mat and the back plastics. I feel like there should be Jeopardy theme music playing here if it wasn't copyrighted. All right, now here comes the fun part. We can actually start disconnecting these, all of these connectors. They pop out relatively easy with the spudger. I would not use a metallic object here. Um, make sure you disconnect your battery as soon as you can get to the battery. But a nylon spudger shouldn't cause any shorts wireless charging coil comes off relatively easy. There's a little bit of tape that tapes it to the body of the phone. Just pull up easy, easily so you don't damage that wireless charging coil. There's your millimeter wave antenna, the battery connector, the three extension cables. The first time I saw these extension cables on a device was the ZTE. can't remember the exact model, but it was a ZTE phone and now we're seeing it in a lot more Android devices these days. Samsung is starting to use them pretty much every model. This top plastic piece is a little different this year. The ear speaker is attached to this top plastic piece. In previous generations, the ear speaker was in the body of the screen and you just pull it away and transfer it to the new screen, but that's not the case this year. Make sure all of these other connectors are 
disconnected from the board. You can just pop the board right out. Looks like I did miss one here. So we're gonna to need to disconnect that without ripping a cable. And that board should pop right out. As you can see, the three cameras are connected to the board and they come out with the board. You can disconnect the cameras from the board if you choose. They're not soldered to the board. If you need to do a camera replacement, it is possible to do that. All three cameras are in one assembly. You just disconnect that camera and pop it off. Otherwise, if you're just going to put the board back into the phone on the new frame, you don't have to disconnect the cameras. It's easier just to leave them connected. Now this front camera here looks to be permanently adhered to the frame, which means if that is the case, you're gonna to have to change the front camera if you have to change the screen. This is something different. Samsung hasn't done this in the past. The front camera is usually one of the first things that pops off and then you've got your vibrate motor there. That front camera is one of the first things you pop off on previous models and it's easily replaceable, but it looks like it's this one's permanently adhered to the screen. Now we jump down to the charge port. It is modular again this year, so you can change the charge port yourself. Something different this year was the SIM card uh, reader has been moved to the charge port. It's usually at the top of the phone. So now the SIM card tray and the charge port are one modular piece down at the bottom of the phone. And one of the rookie mistakes I made here is forgetting to remove the SIM card tray before I started trying to remove the charge port, resulting in the charge port being a little more difficult to pull out. It was at this moment that I realized I'd made that mistake. Luckily, I didn't break the SIM card tray. One dollar piece of uh, plastic that can't probably be replaced without buying a whole other phone at the moment. These SIM card trays cost less than a dollar most of the time when you can buy parts but being that this phone's only been out for a day i doubt you could buy parts yet there's your sim card ejector pin it's just a piece of plastic that goes in the bottom of the phone and there you have it s21 plus completely disassembled i didn't pull the battery out because i need to keep this phone intact as much as possible i don't want to risk bending the battery and then not having a battery to replace it with this phone does have to be usable when i'm finished so Got our charge port put back in, SIM card tray put back in. Now it's time to put the board back in place, get all of our connectors plugged back in. Now that we're putting the board back in place, you want to make sure that as you pop these connectors back into place that you feel that satisfying click. If you don't feel the click, then chances are you don't have a good connection and your, your device may not function properly. Um, each one of these, if it's in place, very snugly and securely and if you don't feel that that click when it grooves into place it's probably not connected properly it's better to double check it now than we're having to risk tearing your phone down a second time or a third time and checking it later so make sure that you feel that pop that you feel that little click it's gentle but it's satisfying these extender ribbons need to be connected both on the charge port and on the motherboard each one of them has a function Make sure you get each one of them in place in the correct connector. Now we can put the bottom plastics for the loudspeaker back in place. These plastic connectors at the top and the bottom for the ear speaker and loudspeaker, they have guiding pins. You want to make sure that they go in the correct You want to make sure that they go in correctly. If they don't go in correctly, the little guiding pins are going to stick out a little bit and your back glass will not fit back on your phone properly. You'll have bulges and you want to make sure that they snap right in place. The screws will help with this, but if it's sitting on top of the board, the board's not going to fit on properly. The back glass isn't going to fit on properly. Your wireless charging coil is not going to fit on properly. Everything fits together like a puzzle piece. Sometimes you may have to pull it out and put it back in just to be safe. Our wireless charging coil can go back on. 
this is relatively easy. You just have to line up the screw holes, make sure the connectors on the wireless charging coil are snapped into place, and then you can start putting your screws back in, all 23 of them. These Samsung devices are relatively easy to repair these days. I remember the days of the S6 and the Note 5 where you had to separate the LCD from the frame just to change the screen or you had to separate the LCD to change the charge port. Samsung devices have come a long way in repairability over the last few years. There was one generation, I believe it was the S10, where you had the charge port was soldered to the board and that wasn't very much fun. I don't do soldering and I don't have time to learn so might be something that I have to think about in the future. Just a few more screws to go and we will be done. Now if you have extra screws here, make sure you find where that screw goes. You will not have extra parts if you did it right. So find that screw hole like I did here wasn't sure where that screw was missing from just make sure you look don't leave extra screws left out of your phone they all have a function they all have a purpose now this adhesive here on the uh, on the back glass the original adhesive you can pull that off and put new adhesive on or you can heat up the adhesive using a heat matter or a heat gun um, if you heat up that adhesive it will hold uh, I, I don't like to tear the adhesive off and it's perfectly fine so place that on the heat mat and that, that it will regain its its uh, adhesion capabilities and that glass isn't going anywhere. I always check that to make sure it's not going to fall off. And we were able to successfully finish this uh, teardown and reassembly. The phone worked fine. We checked the cameras, checked the speakers. Everything works good. I appreciate you guys watching these videos. If you did like these videos, and you want to see more content like this, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share our videos. We're going to keep these teardowns coming. Each new device that comes out, we're going to, get, we're going to grab those and, and tear them down, put them back together. I, I do this every day for repair, so why not do it for informational purposes as well? Thanks, everybody.